In this video I'm going to look at controlling air pollution from vehicles. We'll start with the three main emissions from a car's engine. So the first one we're going to discuss are nitrogen oxides. I've given them a generic formula of NOx and that's because they can have a variety of different formulae. So how do nitrogen oxides form? Well, if you think about the air is a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen, the extreme conditions in a car engine, especially the spark from the spark plug in a petrol engine, that is enough energy to break the NN triple bond in the N2 molecule that makes up 78% of the air. And so in the car engine, there is enough energy to make nitrogen and oxygen react with each other whereas normally they sit in the air and don't react at all. So that's why cars, especially petrol cars, can produce nitrogen oxides. Carbon monoxide is produced due to the incomplete combustion of the fuel. So petrol is typically um, a fuel rich in hydrocarbons, alkanes especially, cyclic alkanes, some aromatic compounds, essentially all hydrocarbons and so when the fuel it reacts with oxygen, if there isn't enough oxygen we've already been taught that incomplete combustion can occur and carbon monoxide is one of the products of incomplete combustion. The final pollutant or emission are hydrocarbons so basically all that is is the fuel is not combusted so it goes straight through and doesn't react with the oxygen at all and comes out of the back of the car. We'll take each of these emissions in turn now and discuss why they are bad. So the first one we'll deal with are the nitrogen oxides so obviously nitrogen oxide can get into the atmosphere and mix with rainwater and turn into nitric acid and obviously if that falls back to the ground it will be in the form of acid rain. Nitrogen oxides are also classed as respiratory irritants so they're going to cause problems for people with breathing difficulties, they're going to exacerbate things like asthma Nitrogen oxides also cause something known as low level ozone, so I'm going to deal with that in a moment. And nitrogen oxides also contribute to photochemical smog. I'm sure we all know about carbon monoxide, it's a highly toxic gas because it can bind with haemoglobin and prevent your blood from carrying oxygen. And finally, the unburnt hydrocarbons. So these volatile organic chemicals, these are carcinogens, so they are cancer causing chemicals and as you'll see in a moment they also contribute to photochemical smog. So we'll have a look at photochemical smog now and explain how that forms. So we've just said that nitrogen oxides are produced by car engines and the photo part of photochemical implies that it has something to do with UV. So UV radiation can break the NO2 molecule and it breaks it into NO and O. Now as you saw in the ozone video Oxygen atoms can combine with oxygen molecules and form ozone molecules. Now we want this to happen in the stratosphere but we don't want this to happen in the troposphere i.e. ground level. So this is known as low level ozone. The final part of this process, this low level ozone that's just been produced, can react with the hydrocarbons from the car 
Now they're sometimes referred to as volatile organic chemicals, so you might see VOCs mentioned sometime. These will form what's known as photochemical smog. And I'm sure you're familiar with um, photos from Google Images and the like of um, very sort of fog-like conditions, especially in very hot countries, and you often see people with masks on, and that's because the high levels of these um, irritating chemicals in the air. It looks like fog, but it's actually being produced by these reactions here. It tends to happen when the conditions are just right. So we're talking about still, so not windy at all, and sunny. So there's lots of UV. There's no wind to blow these chemicals away. So they sit and this photochemical smog builds up at ground level. Now we've established these three main pollutants that are produced by a car's engine. We're going to look at how the catalytic converter is able to change these three pollutants into chemicals that are far less damaging. So the first thing to establish is where is the catalytic converter in the car? So obviously we've got the engine at the front, that's burning hydrocarbon fuel. The hydrocarbon is essentially reacting with oxygen from the air. Remember the air is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and that's how the nitrogen oxides can form. So the catalytic converter is roughly here in the exhaust system. So these pollutants are produced by the engine they travel through the exhaust system, they go through the catalytic converter and hopefully out of the back of the car we'll get different substances that are less damaging. Before we go into the reactions that take place in the catalytic converter we'll just quickly describe the structure of the converter. So I've drawn here in green um, what's known as a honeycomb structure so essentially each of these little squares is what's known as a micro duct. So it's a very, very tiny sort of passageway through the catalytic converter. And the whole point of this is to give the catalytic converter a huge surface area. So the catalytic converter is typically 10 centimeters by five centimeters. So it's not a very big piece of kit. But they think that if you unfolded all of these microducts, you would have the equivalent surface area of something like a football pitch. So it's absolutely massive area squeezed into a tiny space. The other thing to mention is the catalytic converter is made from these very expensive precious metals. And so you have a typically it would be a ceramic structure that's coated in platinum, palladium and rhodium. So very, very expensive materials used to make the catalyst. So if we deal with the first two pollutants, so the nitrogen oxide and the carbon monoxide, we want to use this equation here. So in the catalyst, these two pollutants are actually encouraged to react with each other. And what is formed is nitrogen, which is obviously harmless, and carbon dioxide. Now that's obviously a greenhouse gas, but it's far less damaging than having carbon monoxide building up in the atmosphere. So obviously that's not balanced at the moment, so we're going to need a two there, a two there, and a two there. The unburnt hydrocarbons, we'll deal with those now, so I'm going to represent the unburned hydrocarbon as octane, C8H18. Inside the catalyst, that is encouraged to react with oxygen and 
complete combustion occurs so we're going to get eight CO2s and nine H2Os so if we go back and do the oxygens eight twos is 16 plus nine is 25 so I always use top heavy fractions 25 over 2 or 2 would balance that equation so you can see there I've changed the emissions now so instead of having NOx we've got N2 instead of having carbon monoxide we've got CO2 and in, and we've also got water now the thing to mention at this point is the catalyst only works once it's at the right temperature and they think that it's around about six miles so the car needs to be driving for about six miles before the catalyst is going to be hot enough to perform these reactions so if you think about any journey that you make in the car if it's under six miles then the catalyst won't be working effectively so you're still putting out the NO the CO and the hydrocarbons in the atmosphere it's only when it's hot enough you're going to get the catalyst working effectively.